Now we want to get deeply involved in each of these three steps. Observation. Did you memorize it? And the question, what do I see? I'd like to share with you six questions that you need to answer in the process of observation. The first of these is who. Who are the people? And in connection with those people, what do those people say? What is said about them? And what do you know about the person from previous Bible study? See, the Word of God is filled with people. People who are acting and who are reacting and interacting with each other. So you want to take a lot of time to focus your attention on those people. What did they say? Write it down. Underline it, what they said in your Bible. What is said about them? Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Have you ever experienced something like that in your family? You got an older brother and say, oh, I know who you are. You're Jim's brother. Rahab, the harlot. How would you like to carry that moniker with you the rest of your life? And remember, Bible study is a process. It's a building process. So what you understand about an individual, say Peter in this passage, you relate to what you already know about Peter. It's the same person, though in a different setting. The second question is what? What's happening? Is it a miracle? What kind of miracle? Who's involved? Is it a story? Always ask yourself, can I tell it? Because if you cannot tell the story, then you need to go back, read it over, examine it again by observation, until it finally becomes so much a part of you that you could tell that story to someone else. It is a command. I'm recently studying the book of James. There are 58 sharp commands in that book. Not suggestions, but commands. There are the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. And so every time God commands something, I need to say, what does he want me to do? And what does that involve? Or is it an explanation? Here's a passage, for example, talking addressed to husbands. Well, I've been married for 57 years, so I've got to ask, is that true of me? It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Do I love Jean that much? If not, I've got my work cut out for me. You go to all kinds of subjects in the New Testament. You want to study love. Where would you go? Well, probably to 1 Corinthians 13. You are in the process of getting such a grasp on the scriptures that you know where to find what you need at the time you need it or when you are ministering to other people. The third question is where? What's the location? Where, where did this happen. And by the way, that's why you need a good map. Most Bibles have a map, a series of maps at the end of them, but many people never use them. And that's why they get lost. I was teaching a class in Fort Worth, had a number of people, none of whom knew anything about the Bible. We were studying the gospel by Mark. Right in the midst of it, a woman with a PhD degree puts her hand up and says, I get a question. I said, fine, what's the question? She said, what part of South America is this taking place in? And you know, I was so jolted. I, 
Madam, would you mind repeating the question? That's exactly what she was asking. Because the geography of the Bible is a blind spot in the culture of millions of educated people. So you need to have a map to trace the journeys of the Apostle Paul. There are three of them found in the book of Acts. You are in the Old Testament and you are following the life of Joseph. Then trace it on a map. It will give you great insight as to the truth you are studying. A lot of people think when I tell them this took place in Palestine, how big is Palestine? About the size of the state of New Jersey. This gives you some idea that all of the things that happened in the first four books of the New Testament happened in a relatively small space, but you need to locate where in that space these things happened.